And we're now doing the video recording, and here we go. It's the Mike Tech Show, show number 771. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Mike Smith. Thank you very much for downloading and subscribing to the show. Please visit the main website at miketechshow.com. You could email me questions and suggestions for show topics at miketechshow at gmail.com. You can leave me a voicemail message on Skype. The name is Mike Tech Show, all one word. Follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash miketechshow, and also Facebook.com slash Mike Tech Show. This show is brought to you by Instant House Call. Remotely support your customers unattended and on demand through firewalls. Try it free by clicking on the link on my website at MikeTechShow.com. Don't forget to use the promo code Mike Tech Show for your free 15 day trial. This morning, two clients I had to help and how one I had never connected before. So one of the things I have done and this was on the website, I have re for remote support, there's an icon and when you click it, it is the instant house call download to download. I had this user click on that. She installed it. I connect it. And I was able to solve her problem that she was having connecting to the VPN. Had another client with a different VPN problem and was able to solve that this morning. So I can't live without Instant House Call. I use it every day. Give it a try. Kick the tires. You will want to purchase it. All right. So today's special topic is, is kind of near and dear to, to me, and it's a little more personal because it is about my town in Florida, and the town is Oldsmar, and a hacker tried to poison the water supply. So there's going to be a lot of news links to Tampa Bay Times, uh, the, an article on uh, from the White House gave an address on this where they were asked uh, about this uh, uh, hack. There is a cybersecurity expert video that I am also going to play in his response. And then I want to give my thoughts on all of this and what has to happen. It's it is a big wake-up call. And the first link, it, first let me tell you how I found out. So I'm watching the news on Monday night. And it's 9 o'clock, and I'm watching MSNBC. And I'm flipping the channels. And I hear the lead story of an attempted water poisoning of a small town outside of Tampa. And I'm like... Wow, I'm in a small town outside of Tampa. And when they said Oldsmar, the hair stood up on my back. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And this attempt was done on Friday. So not this past Friday, the Friday before. So here's what happened. And the sheriff has a video that I'll have linked in the first link. So... There were in the, let me describe the county. It's called Pinellas County, which includes Dunedin, Clearwater, Oldsmar. That's the county we live in. It's called Pinellas. And somebody remotely accessed a computer for the city's water department, the treatment system. They increased the amount of sodium hydroxide, which is better known as lye. Now, there is a small amount of lye that is used to control the acidity of water. But that's only 
a small number. The hacker increased it instead of 100 parts per, per million to 11,100 parts per million. Now, with that, that basically is like having a liquid drain cleaner poured on you or drinking that. So would it kill everybody? No, but it would make everybody very sick. And there, there could definitely be some problems depending on other pre-existing conditions for people. So this was horrible. And the root cause, they hacked TeamViewer. Yeah, that's right. They came in on TeamViewer and the operator watched his cursor be taken over and seen that increase and was able to stop it and shut down TeamViewer. Now, they're telling us that even if that had went through, there are still other, there are two other stop gaps that would have prevented this from happening. I don't know about that, but that's what we're being told. And I agree then um, just, I can't believe, uh, let me rephrase this. They are definitely promoting that it, the water's safe and that there's no problem and that even if this went through, we would be okay. But again, I don't know how true that is. One of the things I'm disappointed is that they even had remote access. Any kind of a utility should not have their systems on remote access. They shouldn't have that. It, this should, it should be a closed environment that the only way to hack it, you'd have to be in the facility and then you could take it over. So the carelessness of the IT department of the city of Oldsmar, I blame them. Now, I, I, a lot of laziness because I think some of the people just wanted to monitor things remotely and not have to be in there. Well, guess what? You got to get up and you got to be in there. And if they're not going to pay you, well, they got to pay you. So the city has to step up and spend more money on, I was going to save this for the end, but I can't help it. They have to spend more money on their cybersecurity and the security of all their systems, all their controls, everything needs to be reviewed. And this is a wake up call for the bigger municipalities like the Tampas, the Philadelphias, the, the big cities with their utility infrastructure, they need to protect it. There should be no systems that they just should not be connected to the internet. That's it. The bottom line. And if they need a way to do it, then it's got to be, and, and I don't even agree with this, a, a secure private VPN, even that they shouldn't. These controls are too important. So a supervisor working remotely saw the concentration being changed on his computer screen and he immediately reverted it. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. But now they're trying to figure out the source. What happened? Who did it? We have 15,000 residents in the city of Oldsmar and the FBI the Secret Service, and of course, the County Sheriff's Office are all investigating this to find out how did the hack happen and who did it? Is there a way to trace it? So this all came about on Monday, and I'm hearing this Monday night. Uh, the, the attack happened Friday. So there's a a bunch of links here, and this one is from Wired Magazine. A hacker tried to poison a Florida city's water supply, and they go into the story, and they actually talked to the sheriff and got some more information, and this is where I learned about TeamViewer software to gain remote access to the target computer, and here's what I'm wondering. Wherever TeamViewer was connected to that person, that supervisor, what about his system? His system was could have been compromised. And how was that compromised? And I'm sure they're doing a forensic analysis of every system that's involved. 
and hopefully they can get back to an IP address that they can trace. And there's even if they do, they're probably not going to get to the to the true individual that was trying it, and there won't be enough evidence. But I, I hopefully will hear more about this story. I am worried about the budgets of bigger utility companies. And one of the things that always happens when you have to cut your budget, they go to IT and that's where they cut. And you can't cut that. Something else, are they getting independent penetration tests to actually test all of the components of everything on the system, both internal and external, because someone could come in and be there, a visitor, a guest, or a, a bad actor get gets physical access, then what are the controls inside? What's the security like? And the uh, what controls are in place to prevent that inside? Hopefully, this is a major wake-up call to all utilities out there to make sure they don't have remote access, make sure they're getting regular penetration tests, make sure their controls, all of their components. I had a conversation with Corey for instant house call and he told me, and I forgot about this. There's been some really big hacks for team viewer. And I, a long time ago, I would use team viewer. But right now, I'm very happy with Instant House Call. And I don't know of any Instant House Call breaches. And he has designed things differently than his competitors. So something to consider when you're looking at your remote access and your solution. And if you're currently using TeamViewer, you, uh, I would say find ways if you can't replace it find ways to shore it up and make things stronger, passwords stronger. Um, you you got to protect the um, your system that is going to connect remotely because your system could be compromised and they could just travel right over your team viewer connection. So we don't know exactly how the compromise happened. I'm going to be following this story and I will update. But what I would like to do is right now play this interview to a cybersecurity expert on this attack. Hold on, I'm getting it together here. It's now on a cyber attack. Okay. Uh, let me... Uh, I don't know if I can get this attack that targeted the water supply in Oldsmar. There are Here's the video. Still more questions. Tonight, cities across the Bay Area are taking another look at all of their security measures in place as they see what can happen, and in this case, what did happen. Fox 13's Dan Maddox joins us now live from Oldsmar with how some other cities are taking action. I know this is a wake-up call for a lot of people, Dan. Uh, it sure is, as you just mentioned right there, all the security, all the cities here in the Tampa Bay area, it's safe to say they are reviewing uh, their security protocols. But I spoke to the former director of the FBI cybersecurity who says uh, this ranks pretty high on what should be concerning. Cities across Tampa Bay on alert after a cyber attack into the computer that controls the chemicals into Oldsmar's water supply. This just highlights um, something that those of us in the cybersecurity world have known for a long time. The FBI Secret Service and Pinellas Sheriff's Office are all investigating after a hacker was able to remote access into the Oldsmar water treatment plant and increase the amount of sodium hydroxide, or lye, in the water to a dangerous level. 
A plane operator realized what was happening and brought the levels back down so no one was in any danger. Austin Berglass built and led the FBI cyber unit in New York. He calls this attack unsophisticated, but very alarming. So any attack against critical infrastructure should be held at a higher level because, again, it has massive impact for not only the national security of the United States, but could potentially harm humans. The Oldsmar Water Department has stopped using TeamViewer, which allowed supervisors to remote access into the computer system to make tweaks, something that's ideal with so many working from home. Berglass says it looks like a username when password was stolen through phishing or possibly social engineering. Oftentimes those credentials can then be um, stolen and then sold on the dark web. Clearwater and St. Pete wouldn't talk about the operations of their infrastructure, but would only say they are aware of the situation. The city of Tampa says they do use remote access at their water treatment plant, but say they are confident in their layers of security. So, um, you know, we, we do take events like this very seriously. We double check our system to make sure that we're not experiencing anything similar. Oldsmar's operation is significantly smaller than Tampa or St. Pete. And security experts say it's too early to know if that's why the city was targeted and by whom. We have seen groups uh, and organizations target small, uh, unprotected infrastructure as kind of a testing ground uh, for a larger attack. That could be one possibility. It could be uh, kind of happenstance where the threat actor really didn't understand what they were getting into. Even if this plant operator wouldn't have noticed what was happening, this hack in progress, there are several, many safeguards that would have prevented the chemical levels of uh, hydroxysodium raising to that level. And Mark, that's something that they echoed in the city of Tampa, that there are plenty of humans in their plants as well. Indeed, and it certainly seems like uh, the, the humans played a role in at least keeping this from getting very far. We do know that because they were paying attention to those more, thankfully, Absolutely. and uh, we're able to keep this from getting worse. Dan, thanks very much. All right, hold on. Let me uh, get that off. So that was Pelicans the... and the other seabirds we see flying around town. Next, next video is starting. So that was the best video that I came across that I wanted to share. And if you wanted to see that video, if you're just listening to the podcast, come back to MikeNation.net, click on the video, and hopefully I'll have that all up and in the show notes and you can watch it. So was it just a test because they could do it and they're going to lead to bigger ones? Uh, we just don't know. Did they accident? I, I don't think this is an accident because why would they take a certain level and start increasing it? Or were they just playing around and said, ooh, let's see what we can do? I don't know. But there, what the cybersecurity expert said, a login and password was compromised. That has not been brought to evidence yet. We really don't know exactly. That was an assumption. So there's still a few unknowns. We don't know why. It's an assumption that, hey, it could be a test for bigger things to try. And this is the warning. So I'm going to have five links. I'm going to have the White House address on the hack. I have some Tampa Bay Times links. So... Take a look at them. This could get bigger. This could be, uh, I hope that nothing else happened and that this is a, a warning for every municipality around the country to take serious, to increase their cybersecurity budget, to make sure they are doing constant testing. And I didn't like that Tampa has remote access. Tampa is a pretty big city. Clearly, they just won the Super Bowl. It's a huge city. And they just admit it that they have remote access. First off, they shouldn't even have said that. And secondly, they think it's secure. Yeah, well, Oldsmar thought it was secure too. <laughs> so uh, it's very it's very interesting. It's scary. 
I'm taking it way more serious than my wife. My wife didn't, it didn't bother her at all. And me, I, maybe because I understand the tech a bit and I'm worried about how much can be compromised. And if they had remote access to this system, what about other systems and utilities around Oldsmar that they're, you know, not just the water supply, what other things can happen? I mean, certainly that's a, a big target, which is water. And our infrastructure is so important. What about electricity? What there are all of all of our utilities that we we take for granted, and can they be as easily attacked? And this is going to be the future of terrorist attacks. It's going to be cyber, and that's where they're going to attack the infrastructure before anything else because it's going to be easier to do and we got to make it tough so that is my story for the city of Oldsmar a hacker attacked the water supply thank god they didn't uh, it didn't it wasn't successful and they were able to stop it so I will in future shows I will do a quick update when they're is an update. So that's it. Short show. Plenty of great links that you'll be able to view all this. And remember, best way to support the show is to use our Amazon link. This link is shared by Carrie Holzman and myself. And you're supporting Tech Vets, the Mike Tech Show, Carrie's videos. This is the best way. Click on the link in our show notes. Then add your items to the cart. When you check out, we will get a small commission. We get that two months later, by the way, just in case the item's returned or whatever. It's a small percentage. Your price stays the same, but that makes a big difference. It is a lot of help, and we appreciate your use of that link. Also, check out Fab's Auto Backup 7 Pro. Tremendous program to move settings and data from one system to another. That is it for today's show. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you back Thursday, regular time, hopefully 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. I like to get on a little earlier if I can for the pre-show. Have a great weekend. Great week, everybody. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Mike Tech Show, a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Please visit techpodcast.com. Okay, let's...